If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I've always had this goal of working at Apple as a product design engineer. And over the last six years or so, I interviewed for around maybe 15 or so positions, ranging from product design engineering, manufacturing engineering, and some product management roles. Many of these roles have reached the final stage of the interview process. And if you know Apple interviews, you know that can take like months. These interviews are usually made up of five to six interview stages, and you're talked to at least 10 different people on the team. So yeah, it can take Take a while and it takes a lot of effort for sure but recently i've realized that i may actually never be able to achieve that goal and here's why now in my most recent interview experiences with them i usually get pretty positive feedback either from the recruiter or from the interviewer that just finished interviewing me and i think i'm on track to maybe go somewhere far with them or at least land an offer but for some reason, out of nowhere, they either ghost me or just say they're not interested and I want to move with a different candidate. Now, of course, people get rejected all the time, but when the whole interview process has been going pretty well and all of a sudden it just takes a 180 degree turn, you can help but wonder why. It's happened three times so far, just completely out of nowhere, where everything's been going good and everything, all of a sudden everything goes bad. Now initially I was like, you know what, maybe there's a skill that I'm missing or maybe when I'm doing interviews, there's something I'm doing that's not right. Or maybe I'm just unlucky. But then a couple people messaged me on LinkedIn after watching some of my YouTube videos telling me that Apple tends to not like to hire people that have other things going on in their life or that have side hustles. And obviously I have that since I have a YouTube channel and I have a business that surrounds my channel. First, I'm like, how would they even know about this? But then I'm like, I guess they could always just Google my name and if they Google it, they'll you know, see my YouTube channel and maybe they just see that and they don't like it. Obviously, I don't know if that is for certain. That is just what some of these people have told me. And some of them have worked at Apple or they currently work at Apple or are just heavily invested in the Silicon Valley and Bay Area tech company industry. So they were credible people who knew what they were talking about. That's why I really took what they said to heart and spent some time thinking about it. But obviously when I hear something like this, my first question is like, why? Why would Apple be like that? Why would they not wanna hire people that have side hustles and other things going on. Because in my head, I thought having side hustles would show them that I'm ambitious, I'm hardworking, and I'm actually passionate about the field that I'm in and the job that I'm applying to. But they were like, nah, nah, nah. They actually prefer to have their employees only be focused on Apple and making great Apple products. So if you have a YouTube channel, a clothing brand, a Shopify store, a drop shipping business, whatever, they probably would not prefer that. Especially if you have any sort of decent success behind your side hustles. If two people with the same engineering qualifications are interviewing for a role, but one of them has a side hustle and the other one does not, they would surprisingly, from my understanding, prefer someone with no side hustle because then they can fully put their entire focus and attention for the entire working day on just Apple. So it was a very interesting thing to learn about the company and how it chooses to operate. Again, it's not like an Apple recruiter came up to me and said, oh, we don't wanna move forward with you because of your channel, but it's employees who either work at Apple or have worked at Apple or people who are again invested in the space just reached out and told me this may be a reason for why you, know, you just randomly get ignored or neglected. Now initially I didn't know why Apple would even be like this, but apparently from my understanding and doing some research and asking these people, the main reason Apple tends to hire people that don't have side hustles is because they worry that if you have a thing on the side, that can eventually become very, very successful and you can stick to that and just leave Apple. And obviously they don't wanna hire someone that could potentially leave Apple in the future. Obviously, if you have a side hustle, you'd only be working on it outside of the nine to five. But sometimes if they ask you to stay late or ask you to work on weekends because there's a huge project coming up, or if you have to travel for work, they wanna know that Apple has your full undivided attention and you're not gonna be preoccupied with something else. Now, when someone first told me this, I was like, bro, that may be a bit of a stretch. There's no way Apple wants to like fully control their employees like that. But a couple people told me this and I'm like, interesting okay again this isn't from like an apple recruiter who told me these are just things i've heard from people who've experienced working with apple in the past then i remembered a story that one of my old co-workers at a previous company i used to work at told me he used to work at apple before and he was telling me a little bit about his experience there he told me about the story where he was traveling for work in china but his mom who lived in sweden at the time uh, had her birthday coming up. So he wanted to just take one day off on Monday 
to go and visit her in Sweden and then come back to China. He asked his manager, but his manager said no. All he wanted to do was leave Sunday night to go to Sweden, spend Monday with her, and then come back to China Monday night or Tuesday morning before they start work. Obviously, all the flights and expenses from China to Sweden and back would obviously be covered by him. He told me he was already working weekends and long hours on weekdays, so taking just one weekday off on a Monday would have been doable for his team. But his manager didn't allow it because he wanted his priority to be Apple. So if that's really how badly they want their employees to be so focused on Apple and making great products, then I guess it makes sense for why they wouldn't want to hire someone like me who has other priorities and other things that they like to focus on outside of work. It's actually a pretty crazy story because he ended up still going to Sweden without anyone knowing and he came back and no one even knew that he left. But he still got to spend that Monday with his mother. But it kind of goes to show you how crazy the Apple culture can be. Obviously not every team at Apple is like this. Um, this was just his experience with one team. Every team at Apple is kind of like its own little company or its own little startup or its own little thing. So they each operate a little bit differently. Again, these are just stories of things that I've heard with people working at Apple. This is not like an absolute fact that Apple is like this, but based on these stories, these are just things that we can infer. What's really interesting and what really gets me is before I used to intern at a company called Ecopy as a manufacturing engineer. And obviously in this four month internship, we do performance evaluations in the middle of the term and at the end of the term. So by the end of the term, when you were doing performance evaluations, there's a couple of options you can get. You can get outstanding, which is the highest, excellent, very good, good, satisfactory, and like needs improvement, I think. So the average person will probably get either excellent or very good my manager at Ecobee decided to give me good, which from his perspective, yeah, it may seem good, but it's not, it's not good at all. Usually if you have anything below a very good, you're kind of gonna struggle to find your next co-op. So I tried to learn from him why he gave me this good rating and nothing higher. This is the exact words he told me, I want you to be more entrepreneurial and have more initiative. So when he said that, at the time I didn't know any better, so I was like, you know what? Fine, that's something I'm gonna work on and make sure I improve it. And over these last few years, I think I was able to work on that skill pretty well. And so it's crazy that that skill that he told me I need to improve, I worked on it for all these years. And now because of this entrepreneurial skill of mine, because of this desire to take initiative, I may not be able to land an engineering job at Apple because they don't want someone like that. They don't want someone that has an entrepreneurial mindset and has side hustles on the side. So just looking back on that and that comparison of feedback is just, Crazy. Maybe I should consider going back to Ecobee if they love this entrepreneurial mindset so much. I've been teaching myself software and whenever I'm learning something new, I have to take notes to make sense of the new material. Otherwise, I'll forget it. Whether I'm working at home, in a library, or a cafe, I bring my iPad to take these notes. Specifically, I've been using Nebo for note-taking who are sponsoring this part of the video. Now, before Nebo and my iPad, this is how I used to take notes. Not very efficient, a lot of pictures and printing. I'll tell you that with Nebo though, I can do three things. I can easily add annotations to a PDF, I can create my own engineering sketches on this massive canvas, and I can take notes that can use AI to convert it to type text. All you have to do is double tap the word. No matter how bad your handwriting is, the AI will thankfully understand it. But four unique things I have been loving is one, I can just scribble with my pencil over something and it actually erases it. Two, it draws perfect shapes. I don't have to draw a circle a thousand times to get it right because from the first time, the AI automatically gets it right. Three, it's so simple to use. A button for typing, one for drawing, this is your highlighter, here's your eraser, and a simple lasso tool to move stuff around. Also, you wanna add an image or an equation, just double tap anywhere on the screen. And the equation can end up looking like this. And four, the absolute favorite thing is that they have AI integrated in this app. And you can use it for three things. You can summarize or explain anything you already took notes on. You can come up with quiz questions. AI can really come up with quiz questions for you based on what you wrote in your notes. This is actually crazy. And finally, if you have any questions about what was written in your notes, you can literally chat with the AI on the app and ask it specific questions about what you wrote and took notes on. 
As I'm trying to learn more about IDs and classes, I kept asking it some questions. Now you can try it for free and see for yourself. I'll put a link in the video description. Anyways, things got really interesting when I found out that a very famous YouTuber by the name of Mark Rober used to work at Apple. If you watch YouTube often, you've definitely seen his videos where he makes stuff about this glitter bomb or he makes a video about the squirrel maze. But anyways, he's talked a little bit about what it was like working at Apple, considering the fact that he had a relatively successful YouTube channel. Now, they told him some pretty interesting things that I think might even apply to my situation. First, when he was at NASA, Apple actually reached out to him and wanted to interview him and potentially hire him for the special projects group at Apple working on, I believe it was the Apple car as a product design engineer. But first, this is what they told him about his channel. First of all, they approached me and wanted me to work for them. And then they told me when I came there, I can't make YouTube videos. And I'm like, for, and granted at that time I had like 250,000 subs. So I was pretty small, but I'm like, forget you guys. Like you came to me. Like I didn't like, then I'm not going to work with you. And I don't feel like you can even tell me I can't make videos anyways. Like, is that even legal? I was shook when I heard him say that because when he was hired at Apple, he had around 250,000 subscribers. Now I have around 230,000 subscribers. And the fact that they wanted Mark Rober to not make videos while he was at Apple probably means that they probably wouldn't want to hire me uh, considering the fact that I have a YouTube channel. Obviously, I don't have crazy work experience. Like I didn't work at NASA like he did for, I think he worked there for like five or eight years. So maybe they could overlook the whole YouTube channel thing with him. So that's why they hired him. But they couldn't do that with me, obviously. There's probably people who are equally as qualified as me that they would probably take because they don't have any side hustle, at least any public side hustle. Also, there was a moment where Mark Rober, when he was working at Apple, was invited to go on the Jimmy Kimmel show, and this is how Apple reacted to it. So I'm making videos, and then eventually, maybe a year later, Jimmy Kimmel asked me, you know, his folks said, like, hey, do you want to come on the Kimmel show? And I was like, well, so I asked, I asked Apple that, and it gets bumped all the way up to Dan Riccio, who is like one below Tim Cook. And Dan Riccio's response was like, we should be focused on making great products. We should be focused on making great Apple products. That's very interesting because if that is truly their philosophy, then I can understand why now they don't want to hire someone like me. In that video, Mark Rober continues on to talk about his experience working with Apple and how they dealt with his YouTube channel. And from his perspective, they were like, Apple hiring someone that has an audience doesn't help them in any way. They don't need their employees to talk about their product or the company at all. If anything, someone with an audience probably can just cause them a headache. Having employees that are quiet and don't say anything or having employees that don't really have an audience that they can talk to is more beneficial to Apple. Because if you have an audience and you work at Apple, people would want to reach out to you to learn more about your experience. Magazines or news articles, for example, would want to interview you to learn more about your experience. And Apple obviously doesn't know what you're going to say, so they'd rather not be associated with you or hire you, so they don't have to worry about that. If your job isn't to represent Apple, they don't want you doing it. Which I guess makes sense. They just want him to design really good products and that's it. Don't do anything else. So my guess is they probably learned from their experience with Mark Rober and decided that they probably don't want to hire any future employees that have YouTube channels or these public side hustles with audiences. You know, that helps them avoid any headaches. And I'm obviously nowhere near the size of Mark Rober. But I guess even if I'm, you know, relatively a small content creator, they still don't want to deal with that pressure or that headache. It's just very interesting. That's all. So yeah, reading up on Mark Rober definitely opened my eyes a little bit on Apple. This kind of goes to show you that you really can't have it all. When you say yes to one thing, you're indirectly saying no to another thing. When it came to my work and career in general overall, I really had two goals. One, become an Apple engineer. I've had this goal ever since I was in my first year of mechanical engineering at the University of Waterloo. And two, become a successful YouTuber. It's something I wanted since I was a little kid, because I remember I used to make silly videos with my brother back when I was in middle school, but I obviously didn't take it seriously until like 2020 or 2021. But clearly from what people told me and what I've read about Mark Rober's story, I cannot have both. So yeah, it is what it is. You know, I love creating content on this YouTube channel. I love talking to an audience. I love talking about engineering. It's something that I really enjoy doing. So I don't want to give that up. 
there really is just one person in the world that can create content as Tamer Shaheen, but there's so many people who are qualified to become Apple engineers. So this channel makes me feel a little bit more fulfilled than working at Apple. Also, there's a ton of companies other than Apple that would actually not mind me having things to do outside of work. So I'd rather focus my effort on companies like that. It's just this realization has been kind of crazy to think about, but with time, I'm kind of getting used to it because at the end of the day, it is what it is. It's their company, they can do whatever they want with their employees and they can choose whoever they want to hire. In retrospect, yeah, I really wouldn't change anything because I value my YouTube goals over my Apple engineering goals. But I'm only sharing this because if you plan on working at Apple, just something to keep in mind. And again, I just wanna mention that everything that I talked about so far is just what I've inferred based on stories I've read online about Mark Rober and what people have message me with regards to Apple. Seeing how other people were treated working for Apple is what made me reach these conclusions. Apple as a company will probably never confirm or deny this, but yeah, I just wanted to share this as it's something that I've learned. And again, if you wanna work at Apple, just something to keep in mind so you know it doesn't hurt your chances. It's such a very interesting thing to realize. But anyways, I hope this video brought you some kind of value. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.